The Thorsby Society is the Leeds Historical Society, and within its collections are a wonderful number of lantern slides, which were taken for use in lectures during the late Victorian and early Edwardian period. Today we're going to look at several of those relating to the history of Hunslet. What's remarkable is that some of the slides, like the one of the old church at Hunslet, are extremely early photographs. This one was taken before 1864 and shows the old church at Hunslet. This building was remarkably old. The original parish church of Leeds was the centre to which all the people living in Hunslet in the early 17th century were supposed to attend every Sunday. You can imagine that in inclement weather it must have been extremely uncomfortable having the long walk from somewhere like Woodhouse Hill in Hunslet right the way across Leeds Bridge and then down Kergate to the parish church. It would have been much easier to have had a chapel nearby and in 1628, when Richard Sykes, the richest man in Leeds of that period, bought his son the Hunslet Hall estate, he decided that his son should be like the Lord of the Manor and have his own chapel nearby. And so what he did was he started to put together a series of people and negotiate with the Vicar of Leeds for the building of a Chapel of Ease at the top of the main street in Hunslet. Here we have this wonderful lantern slide which shows the original shape of that chapel which was constructed in 1628. Brick at that time was a remarkably expensive material and yet thanks to Sykes's involvement it is constructed of brick and is not a simple timber frame structure. When we look at this lantern slide, you can see if you look to the ground floor, a level of um, brick which is darker than the brick above. And that was the original single story chapel. Now, it took some time for Sykes and his cronies to negotiate with the vicar and get an agreement as to how the curate of this chapel was to be appointed. Eventually they came to uh, a, a, what seemed to be a sensible arrangement whereby the vicar and the people of Hunslet came to an agreement as to who was to be the next curate. But that negotiation took some time and so even though the building had been constructed in 1628 it was actually not consecrated till 1636. Now this what became a hotbed of Puritanism did this chapel. The people of Hunslet were extremely independent in their thinking. And there was always friction with the Vicar of Leeds when it came to appointing a curate because they wanted their man, not the one that the Vicar was trying to foist upon them. And that community in Hunslet prospered thanks mainly to their involvement in the cloth uh, manufacturing industry. And as a result of that, the population boomed from about a thousand to well over 3000 by 1744. And so the chapel had to be expanded. And when we look at this lantern slide, you can see the lighter colored brick above. And so they built an entire new story on top of that. But not even that was good enough. And in 1791, it was expanded again. And when we look at this picture, what you notice is that it has this absolutely magnificent tower. Naturally, by the 19th century, Hunslet is getting a reputation as a centre of excellence in all things from cloth manufacture right the way through to pottery. And so it wants a church tower that makes this building seem posh. And so there was a public subscription went ahead in the period 1832 to three, and they appointed one of the most notable architects of the age called Chantrell to design this magnificent tower with its bells 
and also its fine clock. Now, the thing is, as the population expanded, as the fame of Hunslet spread into engineering, this hotchpotch of a building seemed outdated and no longer fit for purpose. And the emphasis came thick and fast as when Leeds had a new vicar called Dr. Farquhar Hook, he decided that the parish of Leeds was too populous and too large. And so in 1844, he introduced the Vicarage Act and he managed to set up separate new parishes. And Hunslet was one of those which was chosen to become a separate parish. And in 1847, this was no longer fit to be a parish church. So in 1860, after a lot of dithering, the local populace decided that they were going to demolish everything. Even though the tower had only been completed in 1833, they were going to pull down the whole lot and have a really good modern church. And what's fantastic about this photograph is it captures that church on the eve of demolition. And so what a wonderful, wonderful shot. Shortly, we'll be learning more about a man called Benjamin Ingham. And he was the gentleman whose generosity in giving £3,000 enabled the project to go ahead this project for a brand new Anglican church in the most fashionable style. <laughs>